Good evening. Welcome to our evening reflection for today. It's the 20th of August. Uh, it's good to be with you. Uh, I thought we might spend a, a little bit of time over the, the coming weeks looking at uh, one of the most famous psalms in the Bible, Psalm 23. Um, we are very familiar with its words. It, it's one of those psalms that's uh, really easy to say. Um, but perhaps in the saying of it, uh, the repeating of it, we uh, lose some of the meaning of it and what it was exactly uh, that Psalm 23 is trying to tell us and uh, what it reveals about God. Sometimes words become so familiar, we miss the meaning of them in the beauty of the poetry uh, that we see. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this psalm. And we pray, pray that as we reflect upon it, we might see you, our true shepherd, uh, leading us, guiding us and calling us to your side and to new pastures. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we shared last week on Psalm 118 this wonderful verse that Lord God leads us to wide open spaces. Uh, and I hear a very similar call, a, a very similar uh, expectation in Psalm 23, uh, that God will draw us out of our um, places of uh, sparsity, perhaps, um, to pastures new, to a realisation of the, the richness and the fullness of the kingdom. Uh, as I say, Psalm 23 is, is one of the best known passages in the Bible, but I think it still should challenge us. It should ask us about uh, whether we totally trust in God, uh, whether we offer all that we have to God, uh, whether we truly follow him to the places that he calls us, or whether we hang back a little bit wary about where that might ultimately lead. In verse one then, the Psalmist says this, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh, that's a bold statement, isn't it? Uh, a statement that speaks of personal relationship with God. It reveals something of who God is through the eyes of a, a, a human being, an ordinary person. The Lord is my shepherd so I shall not want. There's a consequence to God being my shepherd, my guide, and to my following him. Uh, that consequence, of course, is that I have to leave places, but it's that I shall find fullness, uh, a place where lack doesn't exist. If we look at each word of that statement, the Lord, there is only one Lord. Uh, Deuteronomy said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength for the Lord, the Lord your God is one. There is only one God. Of course, we make gods. We make gods of people and places. We make God of things. We find it hard to leave those people and places uh, to put things behind us. But God nonetheless calls us to the wide open spaces of his grace. The Lord the Lord is our Lord. The God is our God. There is no one but him, nowhere and no one to trust. It should ask us, what have we put in the way? The next word, Lord, acknowledges that he is the creator and the ruler of all. But not simply that, he's the one to whom we turn, the one to whom we bow our knee, the one we acknowledge uh, as our, our king, um, the, the one that we'll follow the Lord. And it's a, a real contrast, isn't it, with the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. My king is my shepherd. My God is my shepherd and my guide. These multiple roles, different ways of seeing God, speak of personal relationship. They speak of God as creator and ruler of all, and yet one who is uh, in a relationship with us and one to whom we turn. Uh, both respectfully and trustingly. The Lord is my shepherd. Even the simple word is, the Lord is my shepherd. He 
uh, is my shepherd now, it's present tense. Uh, he not was or not will be, though he of course is and was and will be the, the same yesterday, today and forever. But this is an assurance that here in this moment, the Lord is my shepherd. No ifs, no buts, no hopes for the future. Now, the Lord, the, the King of Kings, uh, the creator of all things, is my shepherd in this moment, in this day, in this time, when I seek guidance, when I'm empty, when I'm full. The Lord is my shepherd, not will be, but is. My then, of course, makes it very personal. He's your shepherd. He's the church's shepherd. He's the shepherd of disciples and pilgrims through the ages. But he's also, and very much, my shepherd. It's interesting that David doesn't say the Lord is our shepherd. He's not um, trying to dampen down the, the personalness of God and his relationship with God. The Lord is our shepherd, of course, uh, the people of God, the people of church. But the Lord is my shepherd. He cares individually about me. Uh, were I lost, he would come to seek me. Once I'm found, he wants to lead me to fullness and to goodness. And so we end up with this beautiful word, shepherd. Uh, the nature of the whole relationship of, of God goes beyond the, the simply feeding and guarding and guiding uh, there's a, an oversight, there's a, a care. Uh, the, the good shepherd, we're, we're told, would lay down his life for his sheep. There's a concern for the welfare. Uh, there's an understanding. Um, there's an authority. There's the feeding, the guiding, the, the knowing, uh, the seeking what's best for the sheep. There's the true companion, the true friend, uh, the one who always has the best interest of those sheep at the heart and so we say with confidence the Lord is my shepherd he cares he looks after and I follow the consequence then I shall not want I shall not want, for, for God cares for me, I shall not want, we shall not want, of course, uh, God's church shall not want. Uh, shall, of course, now and forever, uh, at no point will we, I shall, uh, whatever my need, whenever that comes, I shall not want. If we think about want, God's saying that, God's not saying that we can ask for anything, um, not that I shall never not have abundance not that I shall always have overflowing barns and storehouses but I shall have everything I need that all my needs will be met my daily bread will be provided only when you can say the Lord is my shepherd can you say I shall not want the first part of that statement becomes the dependence of the second. I shall not want is because the Lord is my shepherd. So if we can truly say that God is our shepherd, that we are those who follow, then we can read on to the next few verses. We're going to do those in coming weeks. But I just wanted to finish with a, a little story. Um, in his book, I Shall Not Want, that Robert Ketchum tells the story of a Sunday school teacher who asked if any of the children could recite the whole of Psalm 23, uh, wondering if they'd heard it in church or maybe they'd been studying it. So he said, can anybody recite the whole of the psalm? Uh, a little young girl, a four-year-old, raised her hand. Uh, the teacher looked at her, it was a little bit sceptical whether she could recite the whole of the psalm. But she stood up, she faced the class and she said, the Lord's my shepherd, that's all I want. She bowed her head and went and sat down. <laughs> the Lord's my shepherd, that's all I want. Uh, she may have missed a few verses, but I'm sure she got David's heart. That place of being utterly contented in the shepherd's care and not needing nor desiring anything but that. Let's pray. 
love of God, may we truly know the confidence and contentment that's found from a relationship with you. May we, like the psalmist, be boldly able to say deep in our hearts, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Amen. Uh, Next week, we are going to look at the lovely verse, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Until then, uh, God bless. Darkest path I will not fear